The more I buy watches, the more I collect watches, the more I refine what I like in my own collection, the more I buy and sell and I see what ends up staying in my collection, the more I realize that there is one watch that I particularly like to have in it. And that is what I consider my fun watch. It is a watch that makes me smile. It is a watch that really grabs my attention and makes me really enjoy this passion of watch collecting beyond just having some nice watches. It makes me smile in almost a childlike way. And for me, the pinnacle of fun watches is this Accutron Space View 2020. <laughs> Hello, you're watching James. My name's James, you're watching me, and I'm talking about watches, and there is so much to talk about today. There is so much to talk about how this watch was made, how it is powered, the technology behind it, and how this one differs from other watches that are out there. In fact, it is completely different from any other watch you may have ever seen, because it is powered by something unique. But I'm not the best one to tell you about that. There are some great videos online that describe how this watch was put together, how this watch was produced, the project that was made to actually produce this particular watch. And those videos will tell you about how the energy is stored in an accumulator powered by two electrostatic motors. That when activated by motion, they will activate the main generator and you'll see the watch come out of its power reserve mode and that second hand will start to move. But it will start to move slowly at first before it eventually catches up with the correct time and then off it will go at full speed in a completely silent but completely steady sweep of the hand. But because I'm not an expert in this field and because there are better videos out there specifically identifying and showing you this, what I'm gonna show you today is just this amazing watch that's on my wrist and share with you why I like it so much. But something about this watch that puts some people off is the overall dimensions because it is a large watch. However, looking at my 17 centimeter wrist, I think it fits well, especially because it's a different design watch. It's a fun watch, it's an interesting watch, which I think forgives size slightly, but, but it is still a big watch because the case is 43 millimeters. It sits 16 millimeters tall with a lug to lug of 49 millimeters. The lug width, is 22 millimeters, and you can tell that it is a substantial watch because even on this leather strap, it is 106 grams. But those dimensions really don't sort of suggest what it actually is when you have this watch in hand or on wrist, because as I said, the fun factor of it, the interest factor, the differences of this watch compared to others, really change the way it sits on your wrist. Well, it doesn't change the physical way it sits on your wrist, but it changes the way that you perceive the watch and what you're enjoying from it. And one of the main things you are enjoying of this watch is just how it looks. Because when you look at the dial, well, does it actually have a dial? What it actually, or I think it has, is a skeletonized cutout, which contains the movement, it contains those electrostatic rotors and the generator. So down the bottom, you'll see those two electrostatic motors. When they spin, they create a charge, which is put into an accumulator. When there is enough charge, it powers that rotor up in that top left, that generator, which when spinning, will then activate that second hand. It was all surrounded by this green cutout, which then accentuates those generators and that gray from behind. And looking behind, you can actually see parts of the movement itself. And when you move this watch, there is movement because there is a counterweight inside there that gets those accumulators working or gets those generators moving. And you'll see floating above that dial is an inner chapter ring, which has some loom in there and some minute markers and hour markers. And that sits on a clear piece of plastic, which almost floats above that interest factor, which you're looking at. The hands themselves are actually rather basic. I like the shape of them and they are gloss white with loom in them. And when you turn the lights off, you'll actually see the loom is pretty good with this watch, which you kind of hope for because it's not a cheap watch. And I'm going to return to that price at the end of this video. But what I do also like is that the orange on that second hand gives you a little bit of flash of color. The entire watch has a nice large piece of almost top hat sapphire crystal. And then comes a little bit of a surprise because I knew I liked the look of this watch. You look at that dial and you see so much interest factor, fun factor, but then you turn the watch onto its side and you see 
that the case of the watch is something rather special too because that solid bezel is polished. All the lugs, both the sides and the top of them are also polished, but then the case profile has a vertical brushing and then an undercut polish to the underside of this watch, which allows it to sit a little bit better on wrist, but having that polish brush polish really grabs my attention and it's nice that it breaks up this design as well. On the back of the watch, you can see that they have chosen not to go through a see-through case back. Perhaps there's just enough that you're seeing from the front of the watch that you don't need to see any more on the back of the watch, but it is done really well. It's a real 3D rear to this watch. When you put your finger over it, you can really feel the depth of all the designs, but it also gives you some information about the watch, that it is the Calibre N630, that of course that it is an electrostatic movement, and it is by Accutron. The crown is unguarded and relatively small, but it works well with this watch with that nice Accutron logo, and it's not something that you should be using very often. This is not a watch that you want to power down, so you need to keep some charge in it. It's good for the health of this particular type of movement. Therefore, you're not then going to have to move it or activate it unless you're changing time zones. And what I really like about this watch as well is how it sits down on the wrist without feeling like it's bobbling about. And that is partly due to this black leather strap. Because it's of the width of it and the quality of it and how it holds onto your wrist, it stops the watch moving and it does not feel like it is moving about. And I'm not normally a huge fan of black straps. I find it doesn't really work in with my sort of style. However, it seems to fit this watch so well because I've tried other straps with this watch and I keep coming back to the original and it is partly to do with the quality of it but also because it suits this watch and it also has a very nice bifold deployant clasp which I really enjoy using and it really seems to elevate the feel of this watch when you're actually putting it on wrist and taking it off. So there's a lot that I like about it. I like the interest factor, I like the fun factor. I like looking at this watch, thinking about this watch and getting this generator moving, getting the second hand moving. I like how the case has been put together and how it looks and how it feels on wrist and how I just like wearing it. But it's not a perfect watch. I think the hands could be done a little bit better. There is something about them that feel a little bit like an afterthought. I'm not sure how they could be done better, however, and perhaps that's why they look the way they do. They are trying to create some legibility to this watch, and if you made them too interesting, perhaps they would disappear on that dial. So maybe that is why they've gone for these very stark white hands. But I wouldn't change much, because this is not a watch that I feel like I should be changing. It is a watch that I'll be enjoying as it is. And that is why I bought it. But I bought it for a lot of money. This is not a cheap watch. In fact, when you look on the Accutron website, they are selling for around about five and a half thousand Australian dollars. But please don't buy one for five and a half thousand Australian dollars because they are regularly available for much less. They are regularly on sale at other websites around around three and a half thousand Australian dollars. In fact, I paid just under three and a half thousand dollars for my version and I bought this one brand new. So if you do want one, make sure you get one at the right price. But even at that price, it's still a lot of money. And it's a hard watch to decide to buy if you haven't had hands-on experience with them. This is not a watch that is generally available in shops. I certainly had not seen it before, and I probably would not have bought it unless I'd actually come across it like I did. I bought this one from a interesting shop in Sydney. This shop had some amazing watches, expensive watches, high-end luxury watches, yet it was this watch, this Accutron, that stood out to me. It stood out to me amongst all these other brands, amongst all these other watches. In fact, I had to keep thinking about it as I left that shop. I had to keep thinking about it as I walked around the city and I had to go back and I had to purchase this watch because I needed it in my collection and I'm so glad that I made this decision because it's been a watch that I've been enjoying so much. Thanks for watching, guys. Who check this video out next?